Welcome to worship at St. John's Presbyterian Church in San Francisco. Wherever you are, wherever you're coming from, Facebook, YouTube, San Francisco, or beyond, we are glad that you are here. Here in the city, we are entering, or we have entered, our first week of our second shelter-in-place order, if I have all that right. So we're spending a little bit more time at home um, than usual. So instead of coming to you from our church building, today we are in my living room around our beautiful Christmas tree. It's turned out pretty nice this year. I hope wherever you are, there is some Christmas warmth and some Christmas joy near you and around you, some coziness, um, since we are spending more time at home this year. And speaking of joy, it is our third Sunday in Advent, which means today we are spending time with joy and what it means to be a joyful people, what it means to find joy and feel joy in a time like this. Our guide through and to joy today will be the words of Mary's Magnificat found in the Gospel of Luke. Now, this is called the Magnificat because of those first words, my soul will magnify the Lord. And actually, her words became one of the first hymns, one of the first songs of the church and have guided Christians for centuries and centuries. Today, we're going to be spending uh, time with those words in three different ways. We'll be uh, lighting our Advent candles with those words. Then we're going to hear those words set to music. And finally, we'll end our service with a prayer uh, with Mary's words. So that's going to be our guide through joy today. I also wanted to remind you that we may be sheltering in place again, but uh, in spite of that order, our church is still open. Our sanctuary is decorated and open for you for prayer, meditation, or just a place to be. We, uh, we have the building open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, noon to 7 p.m. So come on by anytime uh, in that period uh, for, yeah, for prayer or just some peace, some calm, some joy, uh, or just, yeah, a place to see some beauty and experience something different from your everyday life. We're here again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 to noon. So come on by if you can. In the meantime, I invite you to settle yourselves, gather your thoughts, and uh, take a look at what's going on in the life of St. John's. Please join me in the call to worship. Everything in us proclaims your greatness, O oh God, and our spirits bring your joy to the world. We will praise you as long as we live, and we will never forget your promises. You're the one who feeds the hungry. You're the one who brings justice to the oppressed. You're the one who lifts the lowly. You're the one who loves the humble. And we will not trust in the proud and the mighty. No, we will trust in you and the richness of your blessings. Everything in us proclaims your greatness, O oh God. Wherever we may be, we worship you. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, oh. 
We revel in our promise-keeping God, just like Mary who found herself at the crossroads of God's glory and greatness. We gather in our homes around the light of Christ to wait for the coming of Jesus. We light our candles to warm our hearts with the Holy Spirit and remember our promises. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle in peace. We light this candle in joy. This candle sparks praise in our souls, for Christ is with us. We remember these words from the Gospel of Luke. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me, just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt into her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of the Lord shall come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. God of joy, you are the fire of life that makes our spirits leap, always restoring our sorrows to smiles and our despair to delight. Hear our prayers of joy. Magnify our joy so that we may be joy for others in a world that so desperately needs it. Hallelujah, God. Your joy reigns. Amen.
Like many of you, I'm sure, I have a favorite Christmas song. That's not true. I have so many favorite Christmas songs, I can't even count. I can't even count. Some of them make me feel, you know, that Christmas cozy feeling. Some of them, that childhood memory, that nostalgia feeling. And then other ones are just peaceful and calm. And I love them all. I love Christmas songs. But there's one song, one song, that brings me pure, pure, pure joy. And it's more than just the song itself. It has to do with how that song kind of came to be in my life. Uh, I was with uh, a coworker. This is about eight years ago, Christmas time, 2012. And this was a busy time for the company. Um, lots of deadlines, lots of things going on, lots of things to do at that time. And the holidays were just around the corner. So uh, me and my coworker, during once the, the holiday season kind of rolled around, we, we had this tradition of in the middle of the day, you know, when everything was going on, stapler stapling over here, typing's happening over here, everyone is scurrying around doing whatever they need to do to get their projects done, to get their deliverables turned in. We would stop and pause um, for our own little silent DJ moment. So we would put on headphones uh, like these guys and we would sync up our music, make sure that the time was just right. And when we were ready, we would hit play. And this was just the best Christmas moment. So imagine, again, office noise, office madness going on. And we're basically in silence, looking at each other from across the room. And we get to go right into this Christmas music when we hit play. It was joy, 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 joy. It was everything I wanted in a Christmas moment, in a Christmas song. It was absolutely perfect. And like I said, it was more than the song that brought me joy. It was that moment that me and my coworker had with each other when everything else in the world was going on. We chose to pause that and take a moment of joy for ourselves. And it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. That joy was possible because both of us said yes to it together. Perfect Christmas song. 
Whitney Houston, Joy of the World, by the way. I didn't even say what it was. Whitney Houston, Joy of the World, YouTube it, Spotify it. Greatest Christmas song of all time. Uh, today, in our third week of Advent, we're supposed to sit together with joy on our hearts and explore what it means to find joy. And right now, these days, that can be a challenge, and, and rightfully so. Um, as I mentioned, the, the sanctuary has been uh, open for prayer and for meditation, and we've been able to uh, collect a lot of the prayers of the community, and, and several of you have come down as well uh, to pray in our space. And I can't tell you from, from reading those prayers all the things that folks are dealing with, um, primarily related to uh, the pandemic, our new shelter in place, the health issues, the financial issues, the personal issues that have come up in this space are just so overwhelming for people. And there's still, you know, nine months after this began, so much uncertainty and anxiety and uh, real life changes that have happened um, in the space of this pandemic. So it is, it is a challenge to find joy. There's a lot that can cloud it right now and make it hard to find. A friend of mine would say, um, in the Christmas spirit of things, there's a lot of things that are trying to steal our sparkle. And we don't need more things to steal our sparkle. So today, as we journey through joy and seek out joy, I invite us to spend time with those words of Mary, the Magnificat. Mary is the central character in our reading today. And as we heard during our Advent candle lighting, we pick up right after the moment the angel Gabriel has come to Mary and announced that she will be giving birth uh, to a son and she will name him Jesus. And her first response to this is, uh, you know, confusion and rightfully so. Very confused at this, uh, th this thing that has happened. And, and she says she has wonder about what this moment is for. Um, she's really wondering what, what's going on here. And angel interactions in scripture are typically laced with, with fear in them. There, there's, there's a lot of intense emotion in those spaces. So she's experiencing this announcement and this anxiety. And then the angel comes back to her and explains a little bit of the fine print. The Holy Spirit will come to you. Your child will be God's son. And Mary's initial response to that information is a very affirmative I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Mary responds very quickly with yes, with a yes, a yes to God, a yes to what's to come. And it turns out a yes that will bring so much joy. And we find that out very quickly thereafter. Mary um, in the story, Mary continues and runs to her relative, Elizabeth, goes to her house. And just as Mary says, hello, Elizabeth's baby jumps for joy inside of Elizabeth, and they share this electric connection of happiness and joy between them. And as I read this story, I am struck by how quickly this all unfolds. Mary goes from, you know, this announcement and the confusion and the anxiety that comes with it to energetically accepting what God has for her, to this intense joy that she shares with her her relative. And so I'm left asking, you know, in, in the speed of this interaction, where does this joy come from? Where does this joy come from? And where does it come from so quickly in this woman who has just had a lot of news thrown at her very, very quickly? I think we can learn the most about Mary's joy and where it comes from and where it, it sits with her in the words of her Magnificat. And I want us to remember that these words come out of a present moment for Mary that is still reeling, very likely, with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety, a lot of real abject fear about what's to come for her in her life. Her present moment is this. She is a woman who is now expecting a child. And this, in and of itself, is huge life-changing, transformative news for her and for anyone. It is news that would make anyone, you know, rethink what, what's happening in life, their choices, their decisions, their plans for the future. There's now going to be a new life and a new baby to take care of, to care for, and to be a part of that life. So 
this in and of itself, earth shattering news for Mary. It's, it's a lot of newness in, in one, in one moment, very quick moment, but it's not just that for Mary. She is also engaged to be married. So she is an unwed pregnant woman. And what is likely up ahead for her uh, are a lot of questions, likely some public ostracizing and shame as she you know, violates the expectations of what it means to be a, a woman in her people, among, among her people. So she has earth shattering news on one hand that is also, uh, you know, woven with this expectation of shame and embarrassment. So this is her present moment. And I invite us to imagine and sit there with that for a moment, that inner turmoil that Mary is, is feeling at that moment, because it, it is from that turmoil in the words of her Magnificat, in that space where she decides she's going to plant one foot firmly in the past and the other in the future of God's work for her and her people. Her present tumultuous and new and unexpected. And yet there's a grounding in the past and the future of what God has done and will do in her life. She recounts in these beautiful words all the things that God has done. God has shown strength. God has brought down the proud, lifted up the lowly, fed the hungry, and extended mercy to God's people. So Mary looks to the past remembering all of these blessings, the goodness, the provision that God has given to God's people, herself included. And then Mary looks to the future and says that God is a promise-keeping God. The things that God has done were true then, they're true now, and they will be true forever. Mary sees a God that has never left and continues to work in the world and will continue to work in all of creation until all is made right. And she's a part of that. Mary's joy then is not just a feeling. It's not just a fleeting joy. It's a complex joy that weaves together the unexpectedness and perhaps the brokenness of the present moment with the blessings of the past and a hope for the future. It's a joy that's not built on the circumstances, but on trust, on trust, on faith in God's constant goodness. This is the joy of Mary. It is the joy that she sings about in these beautiful words. And it's the reason these words have sustained Christians for so many, many years. And and were one of the first songs that we sang together as a people because of this joyful trust in God and a trust that leads to joy. So friends, as we endure shelter in place, uh, the sequel, uh, and this very strange holiday season that is upon us and, um, and our Christmas holiday that is up ahead. Let's acknowledge where we're at and what the present moment feels like. Whatever that might be for you. It might be frustration. You might have a peace with it. You might be exhausted by it. There might be feelings of loneliness. Whatever it might be, feel that. And even, even if it feels like we've rewound and, and feels like it's, you know, we're gone, we've gone backwards, feel what the present moment is for you. But while we wrestle with those present realities, can we, and I think we can, can we plant one foot in some of the blessings of the past year? Blessings like uh, the blessings of our food pantry that has so many interested volunteers that we have to spread them out Uh, over the weeks, more than we ever did. The blessings of the friends that we've accompanied through citizenship victories in the past year, or the blessings of a nation that has a newly reinvigorated conversation around racial injustice and equality, or the blessings of this time where we can reset and reconsider what's important to us. How about the blessings of our youth? Our youth that 
lead us with their new energy for change and transformation in our city and our world. The blessings of our community, this community that has managed to stay connected and stayed with one another and look out for one another in the past nine months. The blessings of our neighbors around our church building that have expressed so much gratitude that our community is open and an oasis for them, an oasis where they can find peace and calmness and meditation, where they don't have many other places for it in the city right now. And all of the other blessings that we all carry with us individually. So can we plant a foot firmly there, one foot there and one foot in the future, knowing that these blessings will surely, surely continue. And like Mary, we can be the ones to magnify them in our community and beyond. So church, I invite you to say yes to this joy. This is a sustaining joy. It is a joy that isn't afraid of the challenges of the present. It is a joy that anchors itself in the past and moves toward the future at the same time. It's a powerful joy that we can carry with us in uncertain times like these, and we can carry forward to all the new things that are to come. And it is a community joy because we get to be a part of that joyful work together. As I close today, I want to invite us into our second setting, our second experience of Mary's Magnificat. And this time we'll be hearing those words set to music in a song. Four years ago, a friend of mine set these words uh, to this music. His name is John Lysinga. He's right here in San Francisco. He's a singer, a songwriter, a, a hymn writer, and a, a worship designer. And he set uh, Magnificat to his own original composition. Um, but before we listen to this piece, uh, I wanted to share with you a quick conversation with John um, that I had with him just a few days ago as he reflected on where this song came from in him four years ago and, you know, looking at the present moment, what these words mean to him now. Good afternoon, John. Thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. Awesome. Well, we're glad you're here. Um, John, as I have explained, is an amazing singer, hymn writer, songwriter, worship designer. Um, and he wrote a fantastic piece about four years ago, if I'm right, um, called uh, Magnificat, which is um, based on the text of Luke. So yeah, John, I just wanted to talk to you today, you know, looking back four years ago, kind of tell us about the evolution of this piece and what what made you write it, the why behind this this piece? Sure. Uh, yeah, so I was commissioned to write the song by a, a local worship director for um, a songwriting series that they had. This song, uh, or at least this text, was, was um, it was hard for me to read at the time. Um, mm -hmm. It was, I mean, you have this woman who's given this news um, which is honestly, um, would be troubling to anyone. Like your life is going to change forever. Um, not just because of like the, the savior figure, but honestly, just like having a child, like being, so I'm, I'm a, a new father and I've, um, I'm staying at home full time with him. And, um, and my life has, has changed dramatically. Um, and so for this, angel figure to come in and like say your life's going to change forever um and then for mary's response to be like yes absolutely praise god <laughs> like it's a lot yeah pretty ambitious <laughs> I, I i love my son and um he's dear to me and um it is hard um and i mean especially with everything going on um politically at the time for mary um, and then for us going on today, um, or even in 2016, um, 
that was a hard, for, a hard song for me to sing. Um, praise God. Like you have done great things before and you will continue to do great things. At that time, I was honestly like, uh, really? Um, where are you at? Like, um, with everything going on, um, with police brutality, um, and then, uh, the, um, the, the March in Charlottesville, which had happened that summer. Um, I, I, I had a hard time uh, with that text. I'll just say that. Um, she had a very different understanding of who God was than, than what I grew up with. Um, and I think what I've struggled with, um, even this year is, Mary has this understanding of God as a God who liberates uh, this God of love, um, uh, a God who has kept a pro- who has made a promise and intends to keep it. Um, that um, is not necessarily the the image of God that I grew up with. Um, being raised in a more evangelical um, uh, fundamentalist household. Um, so, um, so I think that's, that's been something that I've had to keep in mind, um, as I sing these words that this is a God who, who is seeking the liberation of the oppressed. Um, and that is something that's at the central, at the core of who this God is. Um, that's something that I didn't have. And it's something that in, that I've had to like return to time and time again, that I've had to um, wrestle with my own understanding of God, um, in my everyday practices, um, that this is not who God is and set, and try and set that aside and try and take up this vision of God that Mary, that is just in her, that just lives in her. Um, and this clearly shapes her response to the world and the tragedies of the world, um, in a way that um, isn't natural for me. Um, so my natural response is when I see evil in the world and, um, I get bogged down as I get mad, I get mad at God. Um, that's not Mary's response. And I think that's because we have a different understanding of who God is. Mm-hmm. What? um, we, we've we've spent four years, or you spent four years with that song. We've spent four years since that um, since that song. We're in a new kind of period. It's been you know a crazy year now, but looking looking at twenty twenty, um, what do those words mean now? Would you write the song the same way? Would you hear those words the same way if you were going to do it again? I found myself in a similar, similar place. Like even with um, this new administration coming in, how long? Um, it's a question I found myself asking. Uh, like how long until um, until we see this these things undone um, and this new kingdom brought forth? It is the third week of Advent. It is our joy week. So I'm just curious for you sitting right now in December 2020 um, with a lot behind us and a lot ahead. You know, what is your joy right now? Or what is the joy that we can kind of lean into with the Magnificat as our backdrop? What does that mean to you right now? I'd love to offer some like, here's where we can find joy. Like God is our hope. God, uh, the church is doing um, the work of God and that is our joy. We can find hope and comfort in the church. But unfortunately, I just don't, I can't, I can't say that, honestly. Um, honestly, my joy um, and my hope in God is um, in small things. Um, that are getting me through 2020. Um, it is spending time with my son and my wife 
um, and being uh, and and having the assurance that um, we have our own financial stability, which is not the joy that I, that everyone or security that everyone has. Um, and it, it's um, and I mean I, I find Christmas to be a very um, hopeful time and uh, uh, and every year um, we read Harry Potter books as a family um, for Christmas um, and that's something that um, this nostalgic joy that that lives in me it's in these small these small rituals that we create for ourselves that have meaning that um, that remind us of a time um, that we experienced joy and that can remind us that going forward, there will be times that will give us joy. <laughs> I love that. And you've inspired me to read Harry Potter. I think that's my, my plan now. Well, John, I want to uh, just thank you for your time and sharing the story of this song. Um, and uh, what it's meant to you and, and what it means now for you. So thank you for your time now. And thank you for writing this song and sharing it with us today. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. Merry Christmas, everyone. Joy!
Let us pray together. Holy God of joy, we rejoice in the reality of who you are, and we live within the joy of your love for us, and our joy is deeply rooted in who we are, your children. With all our hearts, we glorify you. In the depths of who we are, we rejoice in God, our Savior. We remember the joyful moments we've experienced this week and offer you our grateful hearts. You have looked with favor on us, and from now on, everyone will consider us highly favored because of you. The Mighty One have done great things for us. We remember your blessings in our lives, our breath and life, the people and communities that we love and love us, the beauty of our city. Holy is your name. You show mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors you as God. We pray for your people, your church, and all who do the work of restoration and reconciliation around the world. You have shown strength with your arm. You have scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. You have pulled the powerful down from the thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. We pray for anyone who needs your strength we pray that we can participate in the radical justice you desire for all creation. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel, remembering your mercy, just as you promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Lord, Help us to hold on to these promises in the coming week and help us experience the joy of your presence in every moment. Amen. Friends, may we say yes to joy. May we say yes to a complicated, complex joy that looks back at our many blessings, acknowledges whatever the present is holding, and entrusts the future to God and God's promises. May we go forth today, this week, and always in the joy of Christ. Amen.